It's like a twisted version of Little Red Riding Hood. Hey! What's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Super 7 Thundercats Ultimates, Mumra! So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. As usual, you have the nice, bright, shiny symbol right up front here, Mumra symbol, Thundercats, Mumra, up top, Ultimates! Super 7, ages 14 plus, on the bottom, words, things, barcodes, on the back, Thundercats logo again, and when we remove the slipcover, we have the tray where the figure sits, Thundercats, all that good stuff, Ultimates, again, and on the back you have that lovely Thundercats artwork, and you have a brief bio there on Mumra if you want to read it, and that's basically it for the packaging. Then moving right along, here we have Mumra, yes, the arch nemesis, the main baddie, the eternal foe, the guy who does bad things and they have to stop him from doing the bad things. That's who he is. That's who he is. But yeah, here we have Mumra, and he's in his, you know, little skinny shriveled up mummy dude mode. But let's get in close here so we can take a look at that noggin. There's the noggin. And a very nicely done head sculpt. This looks really, really good, in my opinion. Got a nice red there for the eyes. Even some, some black around it. Even the teeth are picked out in paint. Just overall, some nice detail going on there. Got the wrinkles going on and everything. You can see the little wraps, the bandages, just kind of hanging down there. You can see his cloak done in red. And this is just a uh, made of rubber, so it's very bendable. But, you know, moving down the body, you can see all of his little mummified wrappings going on there. There's little shriveled up hands. And his skinny legs. <laughs> he did skip leg day. He always skips leg day. He skips every day. Look at him. Look at him. He doesn't, he just doesn't go to the gym as much as he should, like the other guys do. But, oh, well. There you can see a little shriveled up feet. There's the back of the cloak. Again, very nicely done cloak there. Yeah, overall, very, very nicely done figure. Now, with this cloak on, um, the articulation is a bit hindered, but there's something you can do about that. Well, let's go through the articulation as is when you take him out of the box. So the head is on a ball joint, so you can, you know, turn his head around in there. You can have him kind of looking up a bit. Look down a bit, and rotation-wise, that's pretty much as far as you can go. The arms, again, are pretty hindered there. You can't really get too much upward movement or backward movement or outward movement. Um, you get rotation right at the elbow. You get 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. You have wrist rotation and that joint that allows it to move in and out. You do have waist rotation, which I didn't realize until I decided to try to turn it and I was like, oh, there's a cut there. I didn't, it blends in beautifully. It just blends in beautifully. And all these bandages here, you can see are just rubber. So legs can move forward, not that far, back, about that far. Outward, you can get out, about that far. Um, you don't have any thigh rotation, but you do have a slight knee joint, not too much bend there. And the feet, they can move up, they can move down, and you have your ankle tiltage. So now let's run through the accessories. Uh, first thing you get is his staff. Just done all in black, and again, some nice detail going on there. You can see the head, with the red eyes, red teeth, red horns. Very cool looking staff in my opinion. I like it. I like it. So you have that. You also get a uh, another Book of Omens. Just a different uh, color scheme there, but still very nicely done. Again, it doesn't open, just like the one that came with Lion now. It does not open, but a nicely detailed Book of Omens. Uh, you also get the Rosencrantz Medallion. Z there, yeah, brown, silver, a little bit of blue in there. So, 
they have the medallion. You also get a Thundranium Urn. Because where else are you going to keep your Thundranium? Really? Let's be honest here. Where else are you going to keep it? This is where you keep it. Right here. A nice Thundranium Urn. Again, nicely detailed. Nice paintwork going on there. Although some of the, uh, some of those, <laughs> you can see some of the block there that didn't fully fill in there. There's some spots there. They're a little, little off, little off there, but you can always get a little bit of black paint and just kind of fill those in the rest of the way <laughs> if it bothers you that much. But there you have your Thundranium Urn. Uh, you also get the Sword of Plundar, um, the hilt anyway, without the blades. You can see done in a nice gold. Looks very good. You can get that. You also get a pair of holding things hands, because how else is he going to hold the things without holding things hands? Now, these do have a different hinge on them. Um, the hands that are on him, these hands have the inward and outward hinge, but these hands have a hinge that allows the hands to move up and down. So both of those do that. So, hey, switching up things a little bit there, which I appreciate. So, yeah, that's... And you also have an alternate head sculpt. And Mumra can be all like, Bleh! he can do all kinds of that. Again, nicely detailed head sculpt there. Very cool. So, there you have all of the accoutrements. Well, not all the accoutrements. There is one more accessory. And um, as I said earlier, you know, this uh, rubber cape, this rubber cloak does hinder the articulation a great deal. But if you don't want to use this cloak, you get an actual cloth cloak. And this has wire going through the front, around the bottom, and even the hood as that wire, and you know, I always give the same warning about stuff like this that has wires in it. Just don't mess with it too much because eventually it will weaken, it will snap, and then it'll be useless. So don't go too crazy posing it. Just, you know, just try to get into a nice pose. Just leave it alone, you know, don't mess with it too much. But then it can, it can stand on its own too. There you go. <laughs> it's like Dr. Strange's cape. You can just say, hey, how you doing? Hey, I don't know. But, we can switch the cloak out, and to do this, we have to uh, basically remove the cloak and his head at the same time. We just have to decapitate him and pull all this off. There we go. So once you do that, you can just pull his head off, put that off the side. And actually, let's put his head back on, and we can take a, uh, a better look here at his, uh, his mummified body. Get a look at all the detail there. You even have these bits here that actually attaches two arms. It doesn't hinder the articulation though. He can bring his arms all the way out, which is nice. And now we can see the full range of his movement here. He can bring his arms all the way out. You can rotate only, but so far, I mean, as far as the bandages will allow, which is still a full 360 really. So it doesn't really hinder anything. And again, you get that rotation there, all that good stuff. So without the cloak on, he does have a lot more range of movement. You can get a lot more poses out of him. But let's decapitate him again, and uh, let's, we're going to put on his, his screaming face, you know. So again, you want to uh, actually put the head in the hood, and then pop the body on. And just give it a little, little push and a twist, and that should just pop right on. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. There we go. And now he has... A cloth cloak. And again, you can take that and, you know, splay it out and have more like, bleh, bleh, Thundercats, boo, not ho, but boo. That's what I say about the Thundercats anyway. But, you know, you can do all kinds of things there. And now his articulation is not hindered in any way. He now has all use of that articulation, which is nice. And now we will... Uh, We'll swap out his head. Actually, let me rip off his head again. Because even though you can't see it, we'll put the medallion on. Just because. There we go. Why not? Why not? Let him have some jewelry. Why not? Dare I say, why not? Now, if I can find it. Oops. Hey, you stay. You stay. You stay. 
Mr. Mummy Man. Where's your mum? What happened to your mum? Who's your mum? I don't know. You know? I don't know. Who's his mum? There we go. You know, you can't see it, but hey, he has the medallion on. But we'll remove his hand here. Again, just give it a twist and a pull. And just give this a twist and a push. That'll pop in. Like so. And you can have him holding any of his accessories. You have him holding his sword of plundar. Well, the hilt of the sword of plundar. He can hold that. Of course, he can hold, you know, have him holding the urn. You know, get that into his fingers. He can hold his urn. Why not? Um, as far as the book goes, I would actually recommend using these hands for the book since they are a bit more open. And again, just like with all these figures, the fingers are nice and flexible, so you can hold the book quite securely using those hands. So I recommend that for holding the book. But of course, we can give him the staff here. Yeah. Again, we've got those flexible fingers, just move them out of the way, and there you go. And he's got his staff. And that looks pretty cool. And I dig that. I dig that. And again, we just kind of sit that around him. Oops, hey, you hold that, you hold that. There you go. There he is. <laughs> With his staff with his cloth cloak, and he looks pretty freaking cool. And now, for comparison, uh, we'll bring in the rest of Wave 1. Just so we can see how they all look together. Actually, we'll put uh, Jackal Man. My mom right there. Panthro. And there they go. Nice set of figures here. A nice set of figures for Wave 1, in my opinion. I dig it. I dig it. So there's one more thing I want to show you guys. Um, I'm not going to do a whole review on this because it's the exact same figure, but BigBadToysStore.com is offering an exclusive version of this Mumra figure, and it is the the Evil Glow Mumra. And um, yeah, you can see the packaging is done totally in that shiny finish. You can kind of see me. Hi. You can see it next to the, uh, the regular packaging there. But pretty much all the same. Just that shinier, shinier packaging going on, and we remove the sub cover, and there you have Mumra sitting in the tray, Thundercats, and again, the same picture, bio, all that good stuff. Um, and again, it's the exact same figure. The only difference is, is that everything glows in the dark. He has, he has the evil glow. It's a glow of evil. Evil, glowy, glowy evilness, but yeah. So, uh, oh, and also a cool thing is even the, uh, the symbol on the box also glows in the dark. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's try to show this off. So clap off. Okay. So we're in the dark now. We're in total darkness here and, uh, you can kind of see, uh, it doesn't come across as well on camera, but it is actually glowing pretty bright. It's just for some reason, the camera is just not picking it up. Very well. Can you see anything? You can't see anything. He's glowing. I swear he is. <laughs> in person, you can see this glow. On camera, you can't, I'm holding it literally right up against the lens and you probably can't see much of anything. In person, this glows actually really well. Just for some reason, the camera's not picking it up too well, but it is what it is. All right, clap on. Well, that was a failed experiment, but hey, we gave it the old college try. But like I said, in person, this actually does glow very, very well in the dark. But uh, yeah, again, this is a Big Bad Toy Store exclusive. So hey, if you want to pick it up, go ahead and pick it up. It is available right now. So there you go. So there you have Mumra, and uh, that is the end of Wave 1 of Thundercats Ultimates from Super 7. And yeah, Mumra, really cool figure, really well done. Um, you know, you know, I love the option of either using, you know, the, the rubber cape or using the soft goods cape. I think that's really cool and just gives you a lot more playability, a lot more play options, a lot more display options. So I definitely appreciate that. You know, and again, the detail, the sculpting, the paintwork is pretty much on point so all in all 
very nicely done figure and an overall very nicely done first wave here from Super 7. I am very much enjoying these and can't wait for wave 2. So there you go. Now if you would like this or any other Thundercats figures, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There'll be a link in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also check out my Thundercats playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games. Check out Love Peace Paranormal. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Super 7 Thundercats Ultimates Mumra. And this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Big Geek, be proud. Home in your face. Ancient spirits of evil, transform this decayed form to Mumra, the ever-living... Oh, uh, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. You, you were in the middle of doing a thing, weren't you? Yes, I was, I, I was in the middle of doing a thing. Oh. You're going to kill me, aren't you? Yes, very, very painfully. Huh. You have to catch me first. Why do they always do that?